All right, here we are. We are live hey. on this geek time. And uh, yeah, crazy. Uh, so we've been gone for quite a while. And let me see, bring the comments up here. And so, yeah, we, we've been gone uh, out of commission since before uh, Halloween. So it's it's kind of nice to be back. A we've little, been trying yeah, to a little, get a, a little time. Yeah, try, been, trying to get a show together. And here we are. So, <laughs> right in, as you can see, we're a very festive for the uh, holiday season. So, h- how are you doing? Jim? And I have my normal gray drapes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. So, yeah, I, I see a lot of comments. They're they're all missing us, and yeah, they're it's likewise. I I've been trying to put on one of these shows because it's my only creative outlet right now. I'm so busy with the family and. <laughs> Trying to get away and do one of these is, is kind of time consuming. And uh, during the Halloween season, I was kind of in demand locally uh, for doing a bunch of, bunch of ghost interviews and things like that. If you want to see all that, uh, it's on my Ghost Doctor channel. But uh, yeah, I was really in demand this year. So it was, it was trying to do a show like this was impossible. But yeah. All right. So let's get down to the news. Uh, there's been a lot I going to, on. I have to apologize real quick, too, because. We were supposed to do it last week, but it's my fault, everybody, because uh, I was throwing a surprise 40th birthday party. So I'm an old man, and it's <laughs> uh, now. So uh, that's the reason why Chris had put up that we were going to do it last week, but we had to cancel because I didn't even know I was going to surprise your birthday party. So, um, yeah. Right. And happy late birthday to you. All right. Thank so, you. yeah, uh, we've had a lot going on. Let's see. I, I've, I've, we've got a bunch of stuff on the docket today to just knock out. And one of the first news items, and just bear with me because I'm going to try to bring up, you'll see me doing a lot of stuff in the background here, probably while Tim is talking, uh, where, where I'm trying to bring up, <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, they changed the studio here. Uh, shoot. I don't, I don't know how, oh, here we go. Okay, sorry guys. They um, the program that I use they they've switched around a lot of the um, uh, how to set this up. So I'm I, I'm doing a screen share. But one of the things that a uh, very tragic thing happened, and I it, it's interesting, very timely, because I know in the last geek time I told Tim I was going to make a note and make a point that we we're going to talk yeah. about Power Rangers. Yep. And over since then, uh, the Green Ranger. Uh, Jason David Frank died, committed suicide. And I, I the more I looked into this, I'm, I, I'm just, and I, I'm sorry, guys, I got to go there. I'm just, things are not adding up. I'm like, okay, what the hell is going on? I mean, this is some Alex Jones type level crap going on here where I'm like, okay, I, I, I'm calling foul on this because I saw, okay, let me bring this up. Uh, so David, if you check out some of his the last videos that he did before he died, I mean this is a very tragic thing, of course. It's suicide, you know. And, and I'm no stranger to suicide. I've had family members commit suicide. It's a very tragic thing. So I don't want to make light of the situation. Uh, but the things right, surrounding right, it's just yeah. it's just almost weird because in the last video, I, and I don't know if you saw that, Tim, uh, but to break that down. Some of the things that he was talking about, it was very uplifting. And a lot of times with suicide uh, victims, you know, they know they're going to, uh, they're coming to the end. So they won't plan things. Mm -hmm. And if you watch his videos, some of the last things he was doing, he was like, hey, I'm going to be here on this day. I'm going to be here on this date. You know, just talking about his upcoming dates, uh, some of the plans that he's doing. uh, And just very... uh, I'm not sure what the word I'm looking for, but it's the antithesis of what uh, you would expect with somebody who's planning a suicide. 
And yeah, I, you, you wouldn't know, you wouldn't think that somebody who was planning to kill himself would be talking about you know future dates and stuff that he was going to be appearing or or, or stuff along those lines. So yeah, that is. I, I mean, I, I I don't know. Um, maybe more will come out as uh, you know, as the future dates kind of uh, right. And then I, but, I yeah, and then I ran across this article where it talks about. Uh, when all this happened, he was actually on vacation with his wife. They were having a great time. You know, they were just having a very romantic time and whatnot. And she left the room for a couple hours, came back, and the whole thing unfolded. So it's like, all right, man, was, was there a foul play afoot here? I mean, what is going on? It's just... And again, it's, why would you take your life at the height of an emotional extreme? I, I, I'm just right. Or, or I mean, the, or, the okay, okay, Mister, okay, Mister Tinfoil Hat. What do you think happened? Do you think it was a plot by Rita and Lord Zed? What do you think? <laughs> uh, I see. We're oh man, I I and you can't say ninjas did it or putties either one of those. <laughs> Too, so. Yeah, to go down that rabbit hole. I mean, we're seeing a lot of weird things going down in Hollywood right now. And look, I'm the irate gamer. I was in 2012 around that time frame. You know, mm -hmm. before all these other people that are big now in the gaming field. Mm -hmm. You know, I was able to see a couple levels above where I was at in YouTube land and gaming world, and I started to see that. There are cabals. There are uh, these factions that exist. And if you're not going to be a team player, they will push you out. And that's kind of what happened with the Ira Gamer channel uh, okay. as a whole. And I've, I've, I've talked about this on a couple other videos mm -hmm. where they approached me and they're like, hey, we want you to be part of the club. And I, and there were, you know, and a lot of things were coming my way. I was getting, uh, they wanted to put me in commercials. I was meeting celebrities, mm -hmm. uh, and, and I was getting an audience with people like, um, oh, who's that? Leonard Nimoy and Zoe Saldana. I was in the same room with them. Oh, and cool! You're not going to be in the same room with them if you if if you're not part of the club. Okay, let me right, right, right now. And what ended up happening is I told these guys, well, I don't like your rules. I, this, I, I, I don't like some of the things that uh, you want me to do. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you, you I, I, I'm out. I don't want to do this. You know, you guys can fly a kite. That's basically what I told them. And they really, and after I said that, they asked me twice. And the second time they gutted my channel the next month, my revenue was wow. cut in half. My viewership was cut in half. It, yeah. this is never the same again. So, uh, and I just kind of wonder, I'm like, okay, well, was he approached in a similar fashion or did he fall out of grace? Because again, if you watch one of his last videos, he's talking about how upbeat he is. He's talking about his guardian mm -hmm. angels, very, very spiritual aspect. Of course, with, yeah, it's great to see off camera, this mm -hmm. is on camera because he was that way in the show. So it was very yeah. cool, very uplifting and such a role model to so many people. So when you see something like this, it's like, wow, what? What happened? You know, is right. is what they're well, telling us real or? I have I have a couple a points, theory? and then I would like to look at some of the positive of his career and stuff as we talk about some of our favorite stuff from Power Rangers too. Um, but when people have this theory that you know the people in Hollywood they fail upwards, they you know they're always these a lot of these directors and producers. They're how do they keep getting these movies that they're making and they keep messing them up? Like you know, um, but I think a lot of that is like what you're talking about the the you not know, maybe cabal or maybe just you know groups or cliques that are together. So that's how these people who keep screwing things up still find ways of getting work, you know, directors, producers, because they're friends with people in those, those spots. And, uh, and, and that goes with it. Now, the one last thing I want to say about this whole thing too, is, is that for the counter argument is if he was drinking a lot and, you know, or anything like that, you can go from zero to a hundred on that real quick. And then your greatest day and then your lowest day are just, you know, seconds away from each other. So, right. I just and, want to get out there that it might, it, it could just be legit. So, 
Right. And, and I know a lot of people will be like, oh, what are you talking about, Chris? Your <laughs> tinfoil hat. And yeah, I, yeah, this is what this episode's kind of all about, I guess. Uh, or will this little segment here? Because I, I just, you do a, a, a search on the internet about mm-hmm. if there was anything surrounding this that just smells foul and there's nothing nobody's even talking about how this if a conspiracy it's, theory it's so exists. fresh though so i just wanted to put this out there like it's so look, new man, it's, I, it's so new and it's so fresh i don't know if we got the correct intel yet i mean you right. see documentaries on stuff from the 90s or the 80s now and we're finally now getting all the information of all the stuff that was out there because it just they don't release it. They don't release all that stuff. But police, investigators, they don't release that stuff for it. It's not like it's the public knowledge. Right. So, and I know I know some other um, people out there have, have put out uh, certain things about Hollywood, very dark stuff about Hollywood, and then they turn up dead or missing mm-hmm. like a week later or something. So I just wonder, too, did he have some kind of information that he was Maybe. sitting on or, or – because he seems like a very nice, upbeat guy. You know, I, I, I just hope he wasn't part of that cabal or whatever. But you never know. And you know what I? You know, so I'm, I'm throwing my hat about, in the ring here. You know what I find funny about about Jason Frank is that um, he, in to my opinion, is the face of when people think of like the human face behind Power Rangers. Absolutely. When people think about Power Rangers, he's the guy. And the funny thing about that is, is that he was not one of the original Power Rangers. For those that, are, are, that didn't know about it, for those that didn't watch the show, he was the Green Ranger, the the sixth Ranger that came in in like the first season. That was actually when I started watching it. Was I started watching the Power Rangers? I'd heard some people talk about it, and they had announced they were going to do a five part mini series, like Monday through Friday. I remember you didn't that. Get I this remember that. Kids show. <laughs> you didn't get this in the kids show, and. The footage where the Green Ranger pops in, like you always see the same footage of the Rangers inside of the Zord, of the Megazord. Mm-hmm. And they would be doing their, you know, go Power Rangers. And all of a sudden they cut to that and the Green Ranger opens the back door and he's in there <laughs> with him. And I was like, whoa, you never see that because you you got so, <laughs> so indoctrinated with seeing the silver. You're like, what? Holy cow. So that was what made me a Power Rangers fan was was that Green Ranger arc, and then the funny thing was that they didn't have all the footage, a lot of footage with the Green Ranger, so they kept finding ways to get him out of the team. Yeah. <laughs> later on, and then they they took his powers away, and then uh, when they brought back the second uh, incarnation. Well, hold on, hold on. Let, let's talk. Let's talk about the the build up of the Green Ranger because that's what I want to get into too. Uh, okay. Okay. Power- okay. Because look, in hindsight, if you weren't growing up in that era, you 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 just might be watching it on Netflix or whatever, and be and be like, oh, okay, well, I don't yeah. understand, you know, the whole thing. But I think uh, it, correct me if I'm wrong. Later. Well, before the Green Ranger was even a thing, you had the five Power Rangers, and they kept replaying those episodes yeah. over and over and over for a good six months or however long it was. Then yeah. all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. And I remember the whole Green Ranger story arc. This was big. Like, and yeah, when they did this, they promoted it. And you're like, oh, my God, a, a Green Ranger. What? Because you're used to the five yeah. that, that existed. Like, Green Ranger yeah. was not even a thing. So when they pulled this Green Ranger out of their 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 hat, it's like, mm-hmm. what is this? Oh, this was pretty cool. Where are they going with this? And he, like, decimated them. Like, he was. Yeah. They, Oh, and you saw this what? episode after episode where they just keep running up against these guys four, and they episode, defeat them. They yeah, finally get at their, they finally get the head, uh, their the leg up in the final episode. But episodes one through four, he just systematically defeats them over and yeah, over again. He's, and he ends up getting rid of their zords. They're zordless going into the final battle. Like, oh, it was great. And I I don't remember if they did did they do it like one episode a week or or did they do it all in the. Oh. All, all in a row. If, if I remember right, if I remember right, it was Monday through Friday. It was okay. one episode a day, which, like I said, you never got that either. I was, I, I remember, like I was just so excited every day to get a new Power Rangers of the Green Ranger. I know, it was but at insane. The, I, at the end of every episode, weren't you like, "Oh my God, what? Is, how am I going to come back from this? The swords are gone." Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, and it, and it just they just kept worse and worse. And the the fourth episode going in the penultimate episode of of that that mini series of that fourth there, uh, they lose their Zords. And then in the fifth episode, he brings in the Dragon Zord, his Zord. And now you're like, well, wait a minute, he's got a Zord, and they don't. Like, how are they gonna beat him? But then they get their Zords back, and then they fight. Oh, it was so good. And then at the end, they all team up, and then they make a new Zord using the Dragon Zord and the Mega Zord. It was just. Like seriously, I, I I just remember being so like a kid watching that. Like, oh my know, god, oh my god, like, <laughs> we're geeking out. <laughs> I know well, I, it, it, it brings time. my nostalgic feels to think <laughs> about that too, because I was that was the Power Rangers was probably my last big like kid uh, moment. After that, it was like, okay, now I'm grown up, and you put your toys in your closet, and you because heaven forbid a girl know you had toys or your action figures <laughs> or anything like that. So. Um, Nowadays, these kids, uh, they, you know, they, they embrace it, and uh, the, even the girls get into it and stuff. And in our time, it, that wasn't the case. So you had to right, right. act like, oh, no, well, I'm, just, not into, I'm not into that stuff. <laughs> I just remember the final scene in that, that fifth parter where uh, Jason and um, um, Tommy shake hands. And yes. I was like, oh, it's mind-blowing. Like, oh, my God. After this fighting gonna be the whole episode, the two yeah, of them literally, and- literally were fighting the whole episode. Yeah, and and, and, so and then good. they brought him on like the sixth ranger. Like, oh my god, this is just like taking yeah. the Beatles and being like, okay, well, yeah. here's another Beatle. He's going to be part of the group now. It's like, what? What? What is going on here? <laughs> so, did you did you see the, the did you see the candle episode where they took his powers away? I did. So, okay, did let's talk about that next. Did? Okay, because that well, uh, uh, again. So now, so now the Green Ranger is is in and out because. The footage they had, um, I forgot the name of the show they And this was about used. a year later, I think, wasn't it? Oh, it? Actually, I don't even think the Green Ranger lasted a full year uh, from the miniseries and stuff because they didn't have enough footage from the Super Saiyan, whatever that show was uh, that in right. Japan, where they took the footage from of Green okay, Ranger. Well, before, so, before we get into that, let's, let's build the scene a little bit because now you have the Green Ranger coming in. And mm-hmm. for the next couple of months, you're rerunning all these episodes where Tommy's a part of the team. They're all fighting together. Yeah. And it's like, oh, this is yeah. great. Oh, I just love Tommy. And they really built Tommy up. Tommy became like and, the face. And he had a romance with the Pink Ranger. Tommy right, right. and Tommy and um, Kimberly were a thing. And right. so, so go ahead okay, this is the Kimball episode. Now. So now, so yeah, now the now what happens is that they kidnap Tommy. And they have this candle that has his essence or power, Green Ranger power, and it's slowly burning out. And they have to rescue Tommy. And it ends up with, like, Jason having to face off with Goldar. <laughs> it was, like, this big episode. But they lose. At the end, the candle extinguishes, and Tommy doesn't have Green Ranger power anymore. And that was how they were writing him off the show. He says his goodbyes to Kimberly. And I was devastated. I'm like, what oh, the me heck? Too. <laughs> I think he everybody was. was. Ranger. And I'm just like, what? What are you doing? You know. And then I remember they had a after that. So now the Green Ranger is gone. Now we're back to the original five, and we're doing that again. And then they had a mini series that I think was in prime time. I think it was like they ran it at like eight o'clock instead of their normal, whatever four o'clock, whatever did whatever they? time. Yeah, they I did. don't remember. That. Yeah, and because they, they did a couple of them in <laughs> prime time. They when they first did the Thunder Zords, they did that in prime time. And if I remember okay. right, the, the return of the power of the Green Ranger was a two-part episode that they aired in prime time. Because I, I mean, I VHS taped it. That's how much I, I was, I was like, <laughs> like, like, I gotta get the Green Ranger. Oh my god! And he comes back for some, you know, day sex machina. We need to do something, but then he ends up going away again. And so now the problem was was that everybody loved Jason Frank's Tommy. Everybody loved that character. They wanted to see him and Kimberly get together. Now we're we're stuck. How do we do it? We don't have any Green Ranger footage to use. We've killed off the Green Ranger, kind of. How do we do it? So when they did the Thunder Zords, which was the Rangers getting upgrading, because now Lord Zed had come in, and he's uh, he's the villain instead of Rita, they had to upgrade into Thunder Zords. Basically, like Transformers, a new way to get you to buy toys, but whatever. (laughs) But whatever, I'm gonna put my cynical hat on there first. Well, I remember the build, I remember the build up to that was even that was another prime time thing too. That was insane. Yeah, yeah, when you yeah because they're all the Thunder Zords, oh, right? And then so they were good. starting to build up the uh, oh, a White Ranger, a White Ranger, a new White Ranger. Well, like, 
that was the thing. They were like, they, they, they started hinting uh, episodes in. So they had the five with the Thunder Rangers. Then they started talking about hinting at there might be a, um, what, what's his name? The um, the big head. Come on. An alpha five. Uh, aye, 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 oh, aye, Zordon. Aye. Zordon, yes. <laughs> um, Zordon was secretly plotting something and not telling the Rangers about it. And the, the hint was, is it a white Ranger? Oh, my God. It's like with a white light. Who is the White Ranger? And then finally, they had the White Ranger episode where they reveal it's Tommy, and Tommy is now the White Ranger. And oh my God, I think kids are. That's why the white <laughs> the, the white Tiger Zord was the hot Christmas item that year. That was insane wow. to get. Wow. I mean, it, it well, was like remember... Arnold Schwarzenegger's uh, Jingle All the Way fighting in uh, in stores <laughs> trying to get the White Tiger Zord. I think. If I'm not mistaken, I'd have to check the timeline of it. I'm pretty sure Jingle All the Way is a mock of the White Tigers, or not of Tickle Me Elmo or any of the other further ones, because that year the White Tigers or was the hot item, and parents were killing each other to get it, just like uh, that movie Jingle wow. All the Way. So yeah, I don't, I don't remember <laughs> that, but I, I do remember when they unveiled Tommy as the White Ranger. I was like, it just blew my mind. Mm -hmm. Because I thought we were done with him. I thought they were going to bring in some other guy. And then it was like, oh, Tommy. Yeah. And that was a great secret that they kept. So, and then it, they just rolled I actually, it. I actually suspected it. it mentioned Tommy's name. I was, because I, even as a kid, I was kind of, uh, you know, hip to the whole, well, they're not doing it because they can't do it in the, the TV show. But then at one point, uh, I think the Pink Ranger asked Zordon, why don't you just give Tommy his power back instead of a white a white ranger? Why don't you give the Green Ranger his power back? And they basically go into, no, we can't do it. The can uh, I don't think they even mentioned the candle. They might have known that was a stupid plot device. But whatever, they give some bull crap that he can't come back in power. And I was like, ooh, they mentioned Tommy. Is, to is Tommy the white ranger? I'm like, that'd be so cool. And then sure enough, when he unveiled, I mean, I cheered. It was, it was the cheerment. For fans, because you didn't want somebody else. You didn't want a little kid to be the White Ranger, or like, uh, like they do later on in yeah, Turbo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, let, let's Where hold I off on of, that for now. I, right, I want to address some of these. Then. Yeah, I want to address some of these comments. Uh, the the paid comments. Yeah, 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 uh, Jameson yeah. Games uh, gave me a two dollar super sticker, so thanks for that. Uh, and let's see. Thank you. Tamago no Atama gave me a super sticker as well. Thank you very much. I don't make any money off this podcast, so anything that you guys um, send me here is fantastic, and I will try to get to them as best I can. And here's another uh, comment. Hey, Chris, you were my favorite channel when I was a child. First found you from that Super Mario 2 review, and ever since I've loved you. Well, thank you very much. I have... I know I haven't had time for Irate Gamer recently. Uh, it's just family stuff kind of in the way right now, but uh, we'll, we'll see when that changes. And that's all the comments. So if, you've, if you guys do another paid comment, I will make sure to get to that uh, I, in time. I just saw a comment on here that said that, wow, dude, in Japan, the White Ranger actually was a little kid. Ha <laughs> ha, funny he brought that up. Oh, interesting. Um, huh. Was he? I didn't. Holy cow! I didn't know that. That's crazy. That? <laughs> wow. Okay. Wow. I that's that that's was probably why they did it. The turbo. Yeah. Well, so uh, and then I was gonna say that's probably why they did it. They wanted to uh, kind of spoof that later in the show. I, I guess I. I guess I, I fault them for for now. If they didn't, if it worked. I don't know. I didn't see that. So, wow. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, so the, that, that so let's, was just so dumb because all the characters are the same height. Yeah, <sighs> okay, yeah, I thought sorry. it was a dumb. Go ahead, uh, Chris, my bad. <laughs> I was gonna say one of the last things I wanted to address too uh, was uh, one of the things I hated about the first generation of Power Rangers was when the the three left. Mm -hmm. I it, it just they didn't really make a oh. big deal about it, uh, but to me, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh man, the three. Like three of the rangers, uh, who who was it? Um, the the red ranger, the black uh, ranger, Trina, and the Trina, yellow ranger. Trina, Tr yeah, uh, Trina. Jason and um, Zach. Zach, right? They when they yeah, left, I'm like, had... oh, I, I don't want to watch this anymore. And it just 
kind of sucked because the people they brought in, I never really liked them. I I, I never grew I don't know, to I like thought them. Aisha was cute. I remember Aisha, the new yellow Power Ranger, was kind of cute. And I know they, I think they did it for PC reasons because they had an Asian descent girl who was playing a yellow yeah. ranger and an African American yeah. guy who was playing the black ranger. So they swapped it. And then Aisha was a, was a black girl who was now in the yellow ranger. And then, um, Oh my goodness. I can't remember his name. He had the funniest line in the movie though. When he's like, I'm a frog. I forgot his name. Uh, he, 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 <laughs> yeah, he was the Asian guy who was the black ranger. Um, yeah, I but I the... actually, I didn't, I didn't mind him. I thought the blue ranger was kind of, um, was it the, uh, the, the, the new, uh, the, New Red Ranger, I thought was kind of was kind of boring. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I didn't care for the new uh, Red Ranger and the Black Ranger, and I I don't remember their names either. Adam, I was never a big Trini fan. She always was a little bit too Lisa Simpsony for me. She's a little bit too smart girl. I was always more of a Kimberly fan. So, and I thought Aisha was cute. So yeah, actually, I, I was I was. Kind of cool I just didn't, her, I didn't but... care for any of them. I I, I love the old school ones. And to yeah. be honest, let's. See I did like Zach. Ones. Zach was sweet. Zach was Zach was pretty cool. Yeah, I love Zach. Zach that, Attack. <laughs> that that dance. He had that like dance kung fu moves stuff he would yes. do. I was like, okay, like break dancing kind of fighting. I'm like, okay. Yeah, <laughs> and this kid in cool. play hair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what do you all right? Um, what'd you think about Bulk and Skull? I mean, that's a big topic. Uh, oh, they're they're iconic. I, the, absolutely yeah. iconic all the if way. If I saw those two and... actors to this day, I'd be like, that's Bulk and Skull. <laughs> Yeah, I know. <laughs> now, if you love, and I just want to put this out there, if you love the first generation Rangers like I do, Boom Comics had picked up the license a few years ago, and it's just been phenomenal. Okay. Uh, I, I've every month I just look forward to this is it the, title. Is it, is it the original characters? Yeah. Uh, is it your characters, well, the ones the, you like? For like, okay. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. For like the Zach first. Yeah, I, I don't remember what episode or issue they're on now. Uh, but I think for like the first 50 issues, they've, they've centered around the original cast. And then now we're starting to get into uh, the next gen where they're bringing in Adam and uh, the, the other two. I can't remember their names right off the bat. But Aisha and the other dude. So now they're starting to bring them in. And I just love like everything they're doing with this comic just... Uh, tantalates the kid in me. I'm like, oh, this is so cool because they, they actually traveled to an alternate universe and interacted with the Tommy there. Uh, and they just had this big long story arc with the Eltorians, which is what uh, Zordon is. So they just yeah. ended that and they're doing a new thing. I haven't really read into that too much yet, but okay. just a fantastic series. I got one final question for you, Chris, and then we can move on. Sure. All right. All right. When did you jump off? When were you done with Power Rangers? I and, I jumped and off. Yeah, so I jumped off when the three people kind of left the show. I'm like, oh, I'm boycotting the show. I don't want anything to do with it anymore. I was so mad. Okay, but I I, well, so I stuck on way longer than but, you. You didn't get but, to the move the first movie. You never even got. To the but first I did. Movie. I did. That being said, though, I I still dipped in. I'm like, okay, I want to see what they're doing. So I, I was there when they went to the movie with Ivan Ooze. And brought all that stuff in. I, I kind of dipped back in with the turbo, the whole turbo thing. Um, so I kind of knew what was going on. I, I remember they brought uh, the Red Ranger back, uh, Jason back for an episode, yeah. which was kind of dumb. <laughs> uh, but uh, he was like, uh, a... they brought him back, I think, in, in later incarnations, too. I think at one point he was like a Black Ranger, I, I've heard. Um, oh, I saw, I saw, I saw him read up some stuff on the history of Power Ranger. I didn't skull. It'll become um, like heroes in the end of the show. I thought I thought that's a really cool arc that they kind of unite the town when there's a big war and stuff. I, that's pretty cool, I've heard. But when I jumped off was it was when they in, introduced this character on the TV show. I think it was the same time <laughs> as the movie because they they tried to do it where the movie Ivan introduced the ninja zord. <laughs> Ivan Ooze was terrible, um, but they, they, uh, <laughs> but uh, they tried to introduce the thing though. Ivan Ooze was bad. Ninjitsu or Ninjit? I forgot this guy's name. He's like a blue guy, and in the so in the show when they oh got yeah, 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 Ninja powers, yeah, Ninja. When they introduced their powers in the show, they didn't like do the movie like it, it, they didn't make the movie like continuity. They just went ahead and did okay. This is. Um, this is how they get their ninjas uh, zords now, and this 
this ninja who gives him their weapon and he talk like this and i was like what is that? I, I was like i am too old for this this You're is too stupid now and then ivan ooze i think ivan ooze with the cherry on the cake where it's like okay now okay we're done this is moving on we're out of this you know i mean you're it it got too cheesy and too dumb and yeah, it uh, did. for me and then like i said when i heard um when i heard uh they did the sequel movie the turbo movie and they were getting turbo zords and in the trailer i saw the little kid go hey guys i'm the new blue ranger and i'm like yep not gonna watch oh. that <laughs> <laughs> Glad I jumped off that one. Uh, Woo! And then to hear they did it in Japan first, like, oh, touche, I guess. You know? <laughs> I All right, let me adjust I mean, this. I, I can't suspend my disbelief for that much stupid. <laughs> <laughs> let me adjust this comment real quick by Love Warren 88 Nick. He says, yeah. uh, Chris, lo loved your angry reviews, found you back in 2009, sometimes preferred yours over the others, and he taught me about Super Mario Brothers too. Yeah, that was a big one. That went viral all over the internet and that's kind of what uh propelled me to popularity on youtube so i'm glad you saw that, that a transition? Uh, no no i'm gonna go back here in a second because there's, there's a couple <laughs> things i wanted to talk about um but I, I guess this is kind of a transition uh because you know with you what you said with the the like the first power rangers movie uh it was okay, but it, it, you know it, the subsequent movies really fell apart, and it seems to be that way with a lot of the movies that went into the '90s, like especially with uh, Ninja Turtles, because I loved the first one, yeah. and then the second one, I was like, "What?" Well, they didn't bring in Rock Bo Bebop and Rocksteady; they brought in Re Toka and Razar. And I'm like, "Who the hell are these guys?" I still like so, two though. Three is three is terrible. Three is <laughs> yeah. I still three like just two. went completely off the rails. <laughs> Ooh, bug nuts uh, but uh yeah it, it's a lot of those franchises did even rocky rocky five i'm like what the hell are they doing with this so oh god rocky balboa was okay but yeah rocky five is pretty bad yeah <laughs> although oh, in hindsight i love rocky four but when you introduce a robot into your world a sci-fi thing into a non-sci-fi movie you know you're gonna get criticism i don't know what they were <laughs> right. thinking having given him a robot <laughs> All right, so one last thing I want to talk about Power Rangers, and we will move on. Yeah, promise. Uh, you know, it, it was kind of sad because it, in uh, um, October they announced that they were going to do this 30th anniversary where they're going to bring back the all the cast members from the first generation. And you're you're probably thinking, oh wait a minute, Trini died. Well, they actually recasted her with somebody that looks just like her. And I was like, oh, this will be great. Really? And now, now we have the suicide of jason so it's like ah oh, what do you do now it, it, it's just like yeah. this thing is it seems to be plagued by so many pitfalls because i think even um uh the red ranger guy uh jason uh i forget yeah. his name austin something you know austin, he got yeah, into austin. legal oh shoot austin yeah he got into legal troubles so that's kind of pulling him off but they they they're i guess in the last month or so they're kind of coming to a conclusion where he might be able to be part of this and now it's like oh, so many wrenches thrown into this thing so i was like oh this could have been the coolest uh anniversary ever but now you know whatever you do in this anniversary special you're just gonna have this shadow of jason just looming over the thing and it's so tragic it's like oh yeah. what the hell man so yeah i don't know your thoughts. in wrestling they call that term snake bit where uh, it, you it, you try to do something, and no matter what you do, it just it, it something happens, and then something happens. It, the whole thing is snake bit. So, right. Yeah, that's what. All it right. Feels let me like. bring up. Let's see. Adam was the second Black Ranger. Yes, that's it. Adam. Yeah, there you go, Adam. Okay. I'm a frog. sorry, guys. I'm... <laughs> What's that? That was his. That was what he said in the movie with the uh, Adam, the Black Ranger, when they all got their new oh, uh, gotcha. ninja swords. He got a frog, and he's like, "I'm a frog." <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that was a fun movie. I just remember it? that scene so funny because uh, I remember as a kid too when when the, the when those swords came out. I was like, "A frog? That's not very violent at all." How's that going to stand up to like you know tigers and you know saber two tigers and dragons and dinosaurs a frog 
Yeah. All right, so let's move on to our next topic, <laughs> which is Super Mario Brothers. And I know everybody's been kind of waiting yeah. for this. And the it's a mini a Mario. Now I know you you here. Let me let me take the uh. I, I, dude, I, I wouldn't actually. I would not play that, man, because they will they will hit us with a copyright on that. It's Nintendo. Um, I, okay, I'm gonna try doing this where where it's uh, kind of like squeezed in there. I, I think we should be okay uh, doing that okay. and keeping the sound off. Uh, last okay. time we did one of these, I uh, got a copyright flag, but uh, and Nintendo is is pretty known to do that too, man. They are known. Yeah, so let, I'll go ahead and pause this every once in a while. Uh, so I guess everybody's kind of waiting to see what my thoughts are about this. I really enjoyed seeing this trailer because there are just so many Easter eggs. Because for the longest time, I'm like, how are they going to stitch this uh, episode or this movie together? You know, are we going to get something? totally off the rails or something that's just a, a a love letter to the the franchise and this looks like the the latter the the complete love letter because you have donkey kong and it looks like like everything they included in this trailer looks like this movie's going to be stitched together in a way where it makes sense yeah. like they just didn't well, throw donkey is, kong in here that's you know, he's Smash fighting Brothers, him in an arena man. They're yeah. doing Smash Brothers, and uh, and then later on they're gonna do Mario Kart, and they're doing every hallmark to try to make it all a cohesive universe. Yeah. So here's right the uh, and of course they brought in Rainbow Road. I thought it was neat. Yeah. And uh, let's see. Yeah, there it is. So Rainbow Road, great homage. And I think let me see if I can find that section here. Oh man. Uh, and, and I know people are dissing on the look of Mario because he doesn't have the booty. I'm like, really? Do you want Mario to have that booty where it's like over magnified? I, I don't know if uh, I didn't even know that was a thing. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I, I keep seeing it. Like, I got over, some... uh, I'm like, that is really nitpicky. <laughs> but, but <laughs> like, I'll let you do your. But but I I do love the look of Peach. I I've always thought Peach kind of looks very sterile in the video game, and I like what they did with her, where they gave her the small nose, it looks yeah. more realistic, and the eyes are, are very the big eyes, uh, girly, almost like yeah, anime I love that. eyes. Yeah. The one thing I don't like about uh, the the only complaint I have about the trailer is Peach's voice. They picked mm-hmm. uh, what's her name, Elizabeth Banks, and I don't feel like she's the right voice for Peach. I wish they would have went someone that has a um, was it Elizabeth Banks? I, th- I think so. It sounds just like her. Was it Elizabeth um, Banks? I mean, it, I it, wish it, they okay, that, that someone... actually goes more with my point. That goes more to my point about my problem. Continue. Okay, Sorry. go with go your ahead. problem. Oh, I was going to say, all the voices suck. I, I'm going to, I'm going to be, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to try to be as nice as I can. All these voices suck. They picked actors with name brand recognition because you know who Chris Pratt is. You know who Jack Black is. You know these people, and they picked them. They didn't pick the correct voices. I've played Mario games since I was wee a little uh, a little age, and they have Mario talk in games. They've had him talk in games. He sounds like Italian stereotype, okay? And you might not want to do that for this progressive age, but the problem is that that's what we know him as. At least get somebody to try to do that. Chris Pratt is sounds so like like mellowed down that I, I I'm like that does not sound like Mario. That does not sound like that voice should come out of that character. Uh, Jack right. Black is okay. I forgot the guy who's playing Luigi. But he's another one. I'm like, that doesn't sound like Luigi. And the same with Peach. I think the only two I was okay with was I kind of was okay with Toy Toad because he's annoying anyway. And I was okay, I guess, with Bowser because, you know, what are you going to do? You don't want to just have like a dragon shout out. You don't want that all the time. So right. you got to give him some character, especially if you're going to go with a goofy premise, you know, for it there. But I don't know. Uh, I don't <laughs> I- I- I thought Chris Pratt did a good job. I, I can stick with him. Uh, Bowser, I thought was great, actually. And I guess uh, I got that wrong. Peach is voiced by Anya Taylor Joy. I don't know who that is. I know that. I know that actress. I just I can't remember what she's from, but I've heard that name, Anna Taylor Joy. I've heard that. Okay, I'll look um, that up in a second. But again, uh, I feel like I feel like they got people. It's like nepotism. They feel like they got people that were 
you know, friends of friends or wanted to be in this or were names that they feel mm. like they could get yeah. names in here. This is a problem. Like when you look at movies, and, and like, it goes back to the cabal, man. It, it goes all back to the cabal. Sure, Same people. Sure. Um, the, uh, no, but the, the, like when you look at animated movies from the nineties and stuff where they start having all these, these actors play them, but really that's not the best voice for that character. And I'd rather them just, pick the best voice and not somebody because, Oh, it's Chris Pratt. Well, sure. Yeah. It's Chris. Pratt. It doesn't have to be Chris Pratt. It could be anybody. You, it's Mario. That's who we want. We want somebody who is Mario. And it feels like this is Chris Pratt playing Mario, but not well. I, 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 I'm just not liking this, the, the uh, voice act. Maybe it'll be better later on. Um, like maybe they'll fix it. Like they did with Sonic if enough people complain about it, I guess. <laughs> but uh, I, yeah, it, it took me out of the trailer so bad. All right, so that that's who is voicing Peach. I guess I got that wrong. It wasn't uh, who I thought it was. But yeah, what I, have I, seen I don't think she her voice been really. Something. She's been in something. She was in the uh, the X Men movie, the the terrible one. The it's like yeah, I know which one. Which, which one? Terrible one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, Dark um, Phoenix. No, 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 no. The one that went straight to video or straight to Oh, streaming. New Mutants. Yeah, New Mutants. She was in that. Oh, uh, she was God. in a couple other things. Uh, she's like she's like super up and coming right now. Yeah, uh, there's a couple actors that were in that that I felt they were really trying to push to be like up and coming actors. And I, feel I wasn't like, a fan of them. Yeah, but I feel like her voice isn't princess like girly enough. I, I, and I don't know how... I don't oh. know how better way to describe that it's, that's it sounds the like only an older other voice that i had scratchy this is yeah, this is this is going to be uh princess peach warrior princess this is this is peach warrior princess hands down um <laughs> well, i didn't mind that too much i i didn't oh man okay i get it i get it you want to have progressive women in your movies and peach did and in, in your famous game, Mario Brothers 2, she was a character you could play and be in there. Absolutely. But, you know, her, like, wielding, like, a battle axe or whatever it was, I, I no, no, I don't, that, like, I, I'm, I don't know. It, it, to me, it's a Mario game. It, and I feel like they're cramming too much in here. You know, they're, if you're going to do Mario well, Kart, it is the trailer do, after all. Um, they're, they're probably... Uh, Well, oh, what I was saying is, you, you this is up. the trailer after all, so they're probably trying to squeeze as much stuff into it as possible to show that, hey, look, we're this is an homage to the past. It's not just you know. The, but they the shouldn't be in the movie. Sonic. <laughs> the Sonic. This should movie. be Mario. This should be Mario <laughs> and Bowser one on one. You want to bring in Luigi, you want to bring in Toad, and you want to bring in all this other stuff. You you have you can do it in other movies. You don't have to cram right. it all into one. Well, I mean, I, are we forgetting the Marvel the thought process where we're trying to long game this and jump with this right and i think it's I this know. scene right here yeah it, it looks i'm gonna reserve my uh my comments until after i see the movie but it just looks like this might be in the beginning of the movie where she's like okay i, I have to defend my kingdom and obviously she doesn't do a good job because they have to bring mario in so <laughs> i think I that's it. where they're going with that i i um, get it but i Right now, when we have a world where all these all these characters that we love are now being replaced by the female equivalent, it's just another thing yeah, it, added to it. It, it. You you keep giving the bad taste in people's mouths, and you know I said again, I don't care if it's you have a female or male character, but don't just take said hero and then make them the new version of that with 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 just a new coat of paint. Okay, now it's the you know the the Pakistan it's a Pakistani Wolverine. Like uh, I, don't, I just want Wolverine. Like you want to give me a cool character <laughs> that legacy. has those traits? Yeah. Give them to me. Yeah, stop it. Yeah. So I mean, I'm I'm. But I'm the Peach's credit, I mean, she. But but the Peach's credit, I mean, she did kick butt in uh, Super Mario Bros. Two and and a playable character in all those games. So yes, and look, no, I, 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 I'll be right she there never with you. Battle axe, come on! I mean, maybe that's just a <laughs> okay, one-off. Right. But <laughs> but I did see the complaint online as the yeah, that is a complaint where Mario kind of looks like a doofus in this, and you know, Peach is the uh, the powerhouse. But I mean, uh, let's let's be fair here. Luigi should look like the doofus. 
I mean, Mario Mario yeah. goes after the girl. <laughs> Luigi's in a Luigi's in a mansion with a, a vacuum cleaner trying to get ghosts. Like, uh, I mean, that, that that that's the difference between the two of them, you know? Yeah, it looks like they're paying homage to that. And this scene right I have yep. queued up right here. This looks like this is an homage to uh, the the intro to the Super Mario Brothers show where they get sucked down the pipe. And that's what I'm We're excited about. We're the Mario about. Brothers and come in the game. <laughs> that's what I want to see. I want to see yes. them in Brooklyn. Yes. Suck down the pipe, just like in the intro of the Super Mario Brothers show. <laughs> hey, yo, Luigi. <laughs> <laughs> so I am totally down with that. And uh, oh, I, I have to say, I, I Toad mean, sounds like Toad from the uh, Super Mario Brothers show. So I was psyched about that. Yeah, that's the one thing that, I that was the one see. voice that I was like, okay, that's accurate to the to the yeah. thing, everything we've seen. The Super Mario Brothers animated show to uh, even in games and stuff when they talk, you know, that one was actually accurate. You know, also too, and man, I I kind of liked this thing they did. Uh, Captain I, I think Lou I brought, brought it up before on here. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, good old Captain Lou. Uh, in Mario Odyssey, they they, they basically uh, explain that his uh, like his time when he was facing Donkey Kong, like they yeah, basically retcon that in uh, Mario's games into his storyline. And uh, I kind of want that too. I would like to have seen a uh, Donkey Kong or Mario fighting Donkey Kong, you know, in a construction area in in, in Donk City, you know, basically uh, <laughs> doing City. that. That was in Odyssey, and uh, instead of um, it was Pauline he was getting instead of Peach, and it was Mario's first girlfriend. Which mm, okay. I'm telling you, Mario, you should go back to Pauline; she treats you better. So, <laughs> well, and I like this scene too. I mean, you see all the uh, you know, Mario's got to go through this obstacle course that looks like a level. Yeah. So it looks like there's just so many fan, uh, fan, fan homages. Yeah. Which looks I'm great. sure I'm sure I'll like a lot of it that because I I, I played all these games I beat pretty much uh, I think I beat every Mario game but <laughs> Mario Sunshine I just refuse to 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 play that more I hate that game so bad. <laughs> Mario Sunshine everybody yeah, who says I, Mario Sunshine is a great game I'm sorry you're wrong you're wrong we whatever so that's I funny because I remember when that game came out too I just kept playing it. I'm like this has got to get better so it, somehow. And I just been playing it and playing it. I'm like, this, this is goofy as hell. What the hell is this? <laughs> like the, yeah. the sun would kind of, kind of like move over and and take away the darkness in the main map. There, it's like, oh, this is goofy. Uh, so. I didn't like it when I when I tried it on GameCube, and then when they re released it on uh, 3D All Stars, I I hated it. I had one of the um one of the uh, the the black controllers, the um, Pro controllers, and I ended up buying the gamecube controller uh for it because that's the only way i feel like you can play that dang game with some of the controls with how you can control the water spout and everything oh i'm like if you have to buy another controller to accurately play a game and actually try to beat levels it ain't good no it's <laughs> I, I, no and toa idar i think that's how you say it says mario sunshine haters yep. yes <laughs> yes i i love I will oh, own that I want to bathe in the tears of everybody who loves Mario Sunshine right now. I hate that game. game uh, is so bad. I literally, I, I there are games that I have played and beaten that I, I went through it. I, I did it. And I'm like, ooh, that was tough, but I'm over it. Sunshine, I don't even like revisiting. I just, I, 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 I it's like the only 3D Mario. It's a no, it's the only 3D Mario game I haven't beaten. Um, and it is, it, I, I don't want to. It's like I don't need that notch on my belt. I'd rather. Enjoy the rest of my life and not play sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm trying to think if there's, if there's anything else to cover with uh, Super Mario Brothers. Uh, but yeah, I, I dug it. I, I can't wait for this to come out. I, the only problem I had with with it was the voice of Peach. So I, I think um, that's that's pretty much my rant. And things are going good. Yep. Yep. So. All right, uh, let's move along here because here we are almost 50, we're 50 minutes in and we've only covered two topics. Um, <laughs> you so knew it was going to happen. Oh my gosh, it's just ridiculous. All right, so Indiana Jones 5 coming at you. And so Tim had very <laughs> strong feelings about this. So we'll, we'll, we'll get your uh, comments first before I dive into this. Oh man! All <laughs> right. Okay. Here we there. go. 
<laughs> you want, all right, you want you you want me to go first on this one? Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Did we? Did anybody watch Kingdom of Crystal Skull? Do we want more indie first? I'm just gonna ask that. <laughs> Do we want more indie? I think we want um, more good indie. Oh, okay. So you should probably go first because I've I've heard what could be some spoilers for this. This is some oh, really? speculation about this. So. I have some theories from what I see and from what I heard, I heard, I heard these theories and I started laughing because I thought it was just Disney haters going, what's the most absurd, stupid thing that they could do that would like wreck the franchise of indie, And, and then people would immediately hate. And uh, I was like, they're just, they're just creating that. This is not true. And then hmm. I saw this trailer and those things could be true. <laughs> Go ahead with your thoughts first, Chris. I I, <laughs> I, I got to compel myself on this again. All right. So when I saw that they were going to bring a female lead into Indiana Jones, I instantly thought, and I don't know if this is the case, that the, the baton is going to be uh, handed off to her. And they're going to kill off Indiana Jones, which would be sacrilege, I think. But they did the same thing with Han Solo. And this was all under the... Uh, Disney banner, I believe. Mm -hmm. So, and Disney right now is super woke. Uh, and that could be changing soon, but not soon enough, in my opinion. <laughs> uh, so, I, I'm so worried that they're going to kill off Indiana Jones and bring this female lead in to just, you know, Indiana Jones 6, 7, whatever. Uh, and then I read this article here. Let me pull this up here. Oh, maybe you got the speculation too. They did a bunch of test screenings, and they turned out to be disasters. And I guess they had a couple different endings, and each ending was more terrible than the last. And then there was another news article, which I don't think I have, but the um, the director of Indiana Jones 5 went to Twitter and said, oh, this is a bunch of baloney. This We've never screened anything. So I don't know if he's trying to save face or if it's actually rumor. So I, I'm just like, okay, what? What what are we in what what are we in for with this movie? And when I saw this trailer, there were a couple of things I, I thought were interesting. We got Sala back. Uh, they're doing. It, it seems like they're trying to go back to the roots of Indiana Jones, which would be interesting uh, because in more ways than I, one, Chris. In more ways than one. Yes, because they're they're going back in time. It looks like I don't know how they're gonna let me bring that up. So. When you first see that, you think, oh, that's a flashback. I think this is about time travel. Oh, what I be? think we're gonna I think we're going back in time. And if people didn't like Dial aliens, of Destiny, oh it, I mean, yeah, that could be if, because if Dial of Destiny didn't like aliens, then um guess what? Time travel is even more ridiculous than having aliens in your because uh, I mean <sighs> <laughs> what, what are we doing here? What are we What are we doing going back in time with this? I I think this is ridiculous. And from what I've also heard, they're going back in time to kind of finish off the indie character, so that this girl will now be our new Indiana Jones. Right. This is going to be a bait and switch job. I'm telling you right now. And whether or not time travel is the plot, I I mean, the trailer looks like it. You see young Indy in this. And yeah, and you the, see all uh, the, the classic the, homages from the or tropes from the old movies. Even what the was that? The aging effects don't look bad on uh, when when you see a couple of them, but then you see like where he's writing. Oh, I like <laughs> that the Millennium the Millennium Falcon right there. I know, like what is that? <laughs> that is that's what we call an think, homage. They're doing an homage. <laughs> um, to, I think that's a World War II plane, plane but oh, uh, it God. does look very yeah. Star Wars esque. <laughs> Okay, I know. I know that the Millennium Falcon fight scenes were based on like World War II uh, plane battles and stuff. They had footage of, but I, no, come on, come on. We know what that is. It's Han Solo in the Millennium Falcon. Yeah, uh, they think they're cute. Um, like him riding the horse. There's a couple of scenes where he's riding the horse where you can clearly see they just put Han Solo's head on, like CGI to head onto a body. It does not look right. Um, some of the effects look pretty, pretty bad. Uh, the, some of the DH effects look really good. They've gone back, but time travel, uh, you know, I have a friend of mine who said once that he likes indie best when he's just in the forties fighting Nazis, 
You know, that's what he likes. And, and that's where you need to be. Now, if they're going to go back in time to give us some of that, sure. But, man, it's time travel in an indie movie. I, like, I'm just not, not – no, no, if I'm feeling it. I don't know yet. And right. James, uh, James and Games here says they lost the vision. And I completely agree because if – okay, let's say this – we don't know anything yet, but if this is about time travel, then why are you doing time travel? With Indiana Jones, I want something that's grounded, okay? Yeah. It, I want him going after treasures. Like, um, if, you, if you've if you taken um, George Lucas, uh, he's mentioned publicly that Indiana Jones is based off the character Scrooge McDuck, where Scrooge is... If you read the old Scrooge McDuck comics, he's going after treasures and you know treasures yeah. that are very familiar and building. But it was these... also filmed like the old serials you would get in front of movies and stuff, where oh, our hero is in peril, and it was based on like that style too. And it, I, I hear you when you say that. Now, there is magic and stuff in these worlds. There is. So, right. and if you watch the first couple movies fantastic even when we get into uh the last crusade you know it, it look if you're not into christianity or whatever there's it's still a great movie and it still builds on you know what people know about jesus and the the cup and the chalice and all that stuff which is great and then you go off into the <laughs> the fourth movie where it's like aliens and look if you're into aliens that's great you know i love researching aliens and things like that that's great but you know, I, I don't want my my I, I forget how you say it, Tim, because I know you said stuff like this before, but it's like I don't want my chocolate and my peanut butter when it comes yes. to Indiana Jones. I want my I peanut want, butter and my chocolate. Yeah. You know, let's ground this thing in reality as much as possible. In terms of the forties, fifties, you know, whatever. I want to see him going after lost treasures like yeah. um I don't know, El Dorado or or you know, some buried city or the lost city of gold or something sure. like that. Like let, let's go after stuff like that. And instead, we're dealing with time travel. You know, I, I don't know. It, it, it kind of seems like, what was that movie they did? Um, Prince of Persia, where that oh, was based yeah. off time travel, too. Yeah. With the, with the sword. So That's I don't know what they're going point. with here. Great point. I forgot about Prince of Persia, uh, which that was, a, that was a video game was based on. But, yeah, I, I don't. You know, we even saw, like, what was it? Uncharted came out this year. and. It, it, I, I just don't know if these writers and 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 movie makers, like not even just the writers, because the writers are terrible right now in, in movies, but like even the directors and stuff, they just don't know how to make a action packed, fun paced adventure movie now that just grips you the whole way through, where you can get character development, you can get exciting chases, you can get all this stuff, and not you know at some point feel bored or want to check your watch or anything. I couldn't tell you how long. Indiana Jones and uh, the, the the Temple of Doom or the Last Crusade were because I was so engrossed in the movie the whole way through, you know. I mean, whereas like a lot of these new movies that come out, you're like checking your watch, like this is I'm bored. I don't care about these people, you know. I just you know whatever. Okay, that's a cool action scene, but all right, it's a little long. All right, you, that's what I mean. You're like I want to be a kid again watching movies. I don't want to be a critic watching movies. And I can still watch those old movies and still feel and be a kid again. That's a good point. And yeah, I don't and think I it's don't just wanna... because, oh, it's nostalgic or whatever. We say that crap, but no, that, there, there is, there's movie magic. And these movies nowadays don't have it. They don't have movie magic. They don't have ways. That, I think about the poor kids that sit there and, and watch these movies and are bored. When I was a little kid and I was sitting there wide-eyed and was just, you know, enthralled. They get that stuff now, these kids do, from video games, and they get it from other inter means, inter entertainment. They don't, like, that's why movies are kind of a dying form, because a whole generation of kids don't care, because the, what they've been given when they were kids are boring, bland, nothing. Marvel was, like, the only thing doing good, and as we've talked about, it's it's down, going downhill. Right. And I got to tell you, um, going back to the writers, now this is interesting, uh, I've been watching a lot of TV the last couple of weeks, and one of the things I thought was uh, very interesting, I saw the document uh, documentary series called Icons on Earth of the Simpsons, which was on the mm -hmm. Vice channel. It should be on their um, 
uh, there's, yeah. there's streaming Vice thing. has got some good stuff. I wish I had Vice. I, 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 I really, because uh, the YouTube TV I got doesn't have Vice. I wish it did. Oh, that sucks. Oh. Okay, yeah, so yeah. I have DirecTV, so I was able to watch this. Okay. Fantastic. So it's not just a one-off documentary. This is a six-part documentary series, and this is the, of the same people that made the Toys That Made Us show that was on Netflix. Okay. I, I tried that. watching that. I couldn't get into it. Oh, okay. Well, this is the way this, that it was made. I don't know. So this right here reveals the people that have kind of taken over writing in, in the current landscape of Hollywood because yeah. this was an amazing series. I, I suggest anybody to watch it. So what they did is uh, during they're talking about how the show started and the first season of the show and, and all the pitfalls, very deep and detailed, which I just love. So they got a lot of the old writers, a lot of the old uh, artists and things like that that work on the show as talking heads. And it's like, these people look like down-to-earth people that love the, the craft, and they, they seems like they had their heads tied on, uh, screwed on right. And then you had a couple people uh, as talking heads that they have writing the show now. Mm-hmm. And every time they switch to these people, I'm just... I, you start to cringe. You're like, oh, my God, who the hell is that? They just look like this. And they don't hide it. They look like the typical SJW type mm. uh, classic um, stereotype of what those people should look like. And it, yeah. you start, So the one person, they kept switching to her. And I, I don't know if this – if they got off on it or what, but they they kept talking – kept taking her as a talking head and she had nothing to contribute whatsoever to what they were talking about at the time. And it's kind of like they wanted to put her on a pedestal just because she was this stereotypical SJW type. And yeah, you know, everything she said was just, uh, she, she was very proud of the fact that she took over the show in the past couple of years and how great the show is now. And you look at the ratings, you know, the, yeah. the ratings are just plummeted. And I'm yeah. just like, you're, you're writing on a show that people don't really like anymore. People, I, I, you look online, people can't stand The Simpsons now. It's and she's the, it, proud yeah. of it and glorified. And so I, I, I Google searched this, this girl. I can't remember her name. But I Google searched this girl, and she's like, she's very unhinged. She's, uh, I guess uh, she got fired from a job, and... She just lost her mind, so she spent the week at um, Disneyland and blogged about it. Like she did, like three hundred blog posts in one day about, "Oh, I'm at Disneyland," and and "F you" to the people that fired me or whatever. I'm just like, "What is going on? This, this, this these are the type of people that work on Simpsons now." Yeah. And so it, it's just like uh, you see a small microcosm of. Mm-hmm what's going on in Hollywood now. So if, if that's what's going on at the Simpsons, you can guarantee it's going on behind the scenes that, uh, you know, who's taken over on star Wars and Indiana Jones and all these franchises and even Marvel. So yeah. we're, I, I'm just hoping this tipping point just uh, happens soon. Cause this is, uh, you, you get to see what's, what's really going on behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So yeah, and I know and, I got off the, the track there, but no, uh, no, I, I wanted to, but it, it reminds me of that that South Park where uh, they uh, they were sniffing their own farts. <laughs> right, right, right. That's what a lot of these people. When I hear these Hollywood types and these people now that are you know oh we're about progressive and all this other stuff, it's yeah you're just you're you're applauding yourself for you're just sniffing your own farts. You're just applauding yourself for the sake of applauding yourself. You know if if we have real you know equality in this, then it doesn't matter that oh we have the first you know we have the first you know asian superhero the first you know uh transgender whatever if we're all equality then that doesn't matter because if if, if everyone's special no one is right and uh-huh. you know a great line from, from the incredibles and, yeah, and see uh, oh go ahead yeah no but, but that's the thing now it's okay cool so i i i have been what i have watched I know it's on hiatus right now. I have watched the new Quantum Leap show, and I I mentioned on this Uh-oh. show before that I was excited about <laughs> it. They have a non-binary character on this show. I didn't even know that was a thing. I I, I won't lie, but there's somebody who just doesn't identify as any 
thing for sex, I guess. Um, and it's just, it takes me out every time I see it, just like, okay, what are you? But uh, okay, fine, whatever. I, I mean, it, I, I just, to me, it's like, I don't get this. I don't get why, you know, why, why we have to really showcase it. They really, really heads up to showcase it. And I, I just feel like okay, big big whoop, okay, right? But they they're putting them at the forefront, like yeah, we're so progressive that we have this non-binary. I'm like, I don't get why we're where we're doing this. Okay, sure, whatever. You know, it, it, right. it, we're we're caring about things we shouldn't be caring about as a society. All right, it just drives me nuts. I, I I don't get why this is so progressive that we have to do this. Okay, I'm somebody who chooses. Okay, well fine. All right, you choose to be that way. Whatever, but that if, if if we want a real equality, we shouldn't be celebrating you for being that way. There it is. Right. Yeah, and the comment on the screen is it, it, it hits home as well. You know, if you're like, well, I don't want this in my show, you know, you, you get accused of being, a, uh, you know, a hater or yeah. against it. And look, if if it makes sense, throw it in by all means. I don't. Care. No, it, it, you know, I, I don't care. I just feel like this character is 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 put to the forefront because of 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 what because they of are yeah. and uh, instead of actually it being you know a a character and and i couldn't tell you a thing about their character in the show uh, i i mean okay they they're non-binary that's it right, and so <laughs> uh, the point i want to make now too is it kind of makes me mad at, because when i see i saw that beavis and butthead was coming back and I was just like, oh, my God, there's just so many things to make fun of that's right. going around in pop culture. And yeah. the show aired. I'm like, oh, okay, that's great. But they didn't poke fun at anything. They tried to be as non-controversial as possible. The same thing with South Park. You think South Park yeah. or Beavis and Butthead would take things like masking or standing six feet apart from people and just rip it a new asshole. And you're just like, come yeah. on. There's just so many things to poke fun of. I know it's not... Um, you know, accepted or in the Hollywood world, at least. That's but that's we want to see it. It's going to be so funny if you tackle that's that. It. And they just it's, it's the they, political they, it's the political fire of it. It's the fact right. That they don't want to touch it. And they don't because the thing of it is, is that you really want to you really want to hurt somebody. You hurt them at their wallet. You hurt them at their money. And the thing of it is, is that even though. It would be funny, and it would be, uh, and a lot of people would laugh at that kind of thing. It would risk them not being booked, not getting certain things, getting pulled from certain stuff, not being able to work with those, not being in those clicks. You know, you should have just called this the uh, the um, Illuminato because that's really Illuminato. <laughs> 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 I think Tim's cutting out there. Uh... Oh, no. Oh, man. We can't shut down from it. <laughs> I still can't hear you, Chris. They still got you. All right. Uh... They let me out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it looks like a lot of this is starting to. Um... We should change topics. We don't want to get shut down again. <laughs> yes. Uh, but w with what you said, uh, you know, you hit him in the wallet. And I think that's what's happening in Disney now because um, I, I don't know if you saw, but Disney's got a new CEO. The last one got fired or yep. stepped down. I don't know exactly what all went down there, uh, but it seems like uh, Bob Iger uh, took – was it Bob Iger that took over? Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, Bob Iger took over at Disney, and uh, he just – it seems like he wants to go against the grain of all this culture war stuff. And I hope that translates to, you know, we're going to get away from all this agenda stuff. I hope. I, and if that's not going to happen, I, I don't know where the future lies with Disney. We'll, we'll see, man. I mean, it's a, it being a dead horse, but I canceled my Disney subscription. Uh, I, I finished the last episode. Oh, of yeah, Shiro, like I said, I would do on this podcast. And I did the one thing that I mean I had them since day one, like the very first day I had Disney Disney Plus, and I finished that She-Hulk episode and I went right to cancel subscription. It was it was terrible. 
I mean, it was worse than I actually thought. And that's saying well, here, something too. Well, here's another interesting rumor too. Uh, Kathleen Kennedy in charge of uh, Star Wars. <laughs> Look at that Mark Hamill picture. <laughs> <laughs> Could be he on her so way pissed. out. <laughs> Good. <laughs> he does. Good. Oh, I didn't. I didn't see that before. But yeah, he um, looks pissed. <laughs> well, it's interesting too because if you listen to some of his comments, Mark Hamill, uh, he seems like he's just really upset with the whole franchise lately. And they I, I completely. They, I mean, they killed him. Uh, they killed him psychologically, emotionally, physically. They did everything they could yes. to kill Luke Skywalker. Oh my God! It, I so, mean, it, it, and, it, Go ahead. And I, you know, I've heard people talk, like um, people in the industry talk about fame and things like that. And they talk, they, they have this quote where they say that, you know, you're only, when you're in with the pop culture and you're tuned into that frequency, whatever that frequency is, uh, that frequency only exists for a couple of years. And then somehow you, you kind of move out of sync with that frequency. You just don't know what people want anymore and the pro i think this is what kathleen kennedy's problem is you know back when she had a hand in star wars when the the franchise was new you know she was in sync with what people wanted now i i don't think she has a clue and she's just running this damn franchise into the ground and it's just not her it's, it's just everybody in it in everybody in the industry you keep seeing the same names over and over and over again pop up yeah. and they just they're not resonating with society, but they're going to just still cram me down their, their throat because it's like, oh, it was a friend of a friend of a friend. So, yeah, let's just it's, do a favor. And It's also they're, they have these political agendas. I feel like these movies now are, Absolutely. are just are, – are, are, it's, it's like watching the, uh, the, the politicians on TV vote for this person. This was approved by this person. I almost want to see like, oh – you know, uh, Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantum Mania, approved by Kathleen Kennedy. Like that's what you expect to see after <laughs> seeing the trailer of it. You know, uh, I approve this. I approve this trailer. Like, uh, it's they're they're so designed to try to give us what they perceive as their version of a world, their kind of uh, like they want to talk about their kind of things. You know, they 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 send those out there. They're not writing story that. Like I said, the movie magic. They're not writing those that, that are going to enhance a kid that wants to, you know, do that. No, instead, they're just trying to tell him this is how he should be. This is what he should go with. This is who he should approve of. This is the world that should be. And people don't want to be taught or told what to do. You know, let them become something. Don't try to make them something. They'll re re rebel. And that's what you're seeing now. You're seeing right. people now right. rebel. And I All right, it. so and one of the other things that's very interesting. So you know, I I I love reading comics. I'm still involved in the comic world and all that. And I love, I I used to love reading uh, IDW comics. Okay, which uh, was uh, let's see, so they have Sonic the Hedgehog now. They have uh, Ninja Turtles, and the last couple of years they introduced some agenda where it's just all going to hell. And because in both those comics, Sonic the Hedgehog and Ninja Turtles, their entire main cast mm -hmm. has been replaced by their own created females. Like the Ninja in the Ninja Turtle comics, issues one through fifty was phenomenal. It was like the template of for how to do a Ninja Turtles comic. Then after that, the whole thing just kind of fell apart. Now the Ninja Turtles aren't even main characters in their own comic book They're, they've been replaced by females like uh jenica mm -hmm. uh alapex or I, I can't remember how you say that uh and a bunch of other people that are female girls i'm just like what is going on here right. it, it's just same thing with sonic the hedgehog they've run in all these characters that we never heard of that they created for themselves and they just took mm -hmm. over uh, and this, let's see, there's a YouTube video out here uh, that, I, that I ended up watching called Woke Sonic the Hedgehog Publisher Going Bankrupt. And uh, they also have the Transformers comics, which I didn't, I, I don't read that, so I don't know what's going on over there. But the, uh, the guy in the video explained that uh, they put some trans characters into Transformers. So now 
Transformers are really yep. trans. Formers is like, what is going on here? Wait, and wait, 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 wait. So now, not only are they a robot in disguise, but they're they're a drag queen in disguise. <laughs> like, so it's bad enough that we we don't know if they're a car or a robot, but now they don't know if they're a man or a woman car or robot as well like, right. they're really confused. <laughs> i i wouldn't know what i am i'm like i could be whatever well it, it now it's hitting them at hitting now it's hitting them in the pocketbook because now their stock is just cratering like crazy and they are in is that um, hasbro or is that what is that Who's that this? is idw idw and they've fallen under the uh two dollar mark which i the the guy explains when you're under the two dollar mark, you get de or for like a month or two, you get delisted from the stock exchange. So that's the point we're at right now. If they right. can't bring that up, they are going to lose millions, and they'll go bankrupt as a company and fold. Wow. And uh, I'm just like, well, I, to... you push this agenda. I mean, I have no reason to read Ninja Turtles anymore. I have no reason to read uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. You just Drove this thing into the ground. That's funny. I have some IDW uh, Magic the Gathering comic books that I collected over the years, mostly because it had a, a, a special card in it. But uh... oh, gotcha! Because <laughs> I I, I well, sold my comic book collection a long time ago. I was a huge in X Men, <laughs> and I had a big X Men comic collection. But all right, yeah. well, that's all I wanted to say there. We can switch gears to Magic the Gathering if if, if you want, because I know you've got so much to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get to a, little, to a little bit on this. I, I'm, I don't want to necessarily go so crazy into it because there's so much that's happened. But yeah, right. we'll, 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 keep it, we'll, down, keep, we'll keep the appeal broad. For, when you for said the stock was down, I, the first thing that came to my mind was, oh, Hasbro. Oh, because Hasbro stock is down right now. Um, as uh, Bank of America came out and said that, uh, that basically they were, um, I forgot the term they used, but they essentially were telling people not to buy. A Hasbro stock because they were quote unquote killing the golden goose, uh, Magic the Gathering. Um, Hasbro has been kind of a bad company for a while because they, I heard somebody say that it's like they're an 80s company that hasn't adjusted to modern day. Um, they're still in those times. And uh, when you see, um, when you see a lot of the stuff they're doing with Magic the Gathering, you can kind of see why they are overprinting. Uh, so many things, so many cards, and they're making a lot of bad decisions when doing it, that it's causing a lot of the value of those cards to just sink in price. And by doing that there, um, it, it's it's causing a lot of people to leave the game. It's causing a lot of people not to buy the stuff. They're printing a lot of stuff. It's not selling. So um, it, it's, it's, it, it's right now, it, it's a huge debacle in uh, trading card games, is that they've almost become a joke. Uh, compared to the other games that, oh, they're just, you know, they're just overprinting and killing their game. They don't, they don't seem to understand from their players what we want, even though we are telling them, this is what we want. This is what we need. You know, oh, I mean, I, I, I cannot fathom how, the, how they don't actually see that we need um, cards to be worth something, but at the same time, you know, to, to, to handle it with a, um, I forgot the term, uh, kick gloves. Uh, you know, they need they need to keep that um, focused. Now, the big thing they're do they did right now was 30th Anniversary Edition. This was, so um, they have a set of cards called the Reserve List that they used to have a list of cards they would never print it ever again. And they decided to print fake cards, cards that don't have the same magic bag. They're, they're real cards, but they, they aren't tournament legal. So why are you printing them? And they sold them for $1,000 for four packs. Uh, you randomly could get the Black Lotus that was of this fake back, this uh, card. And it ticked everyone off because people wanted to have legit versions. They didn't destroy the reserve list and say, okay, we'll print these cards. People would have liked that. Uh, instead, what they did was they just printed these fake versions and sold them at prices that were exorbitant that no one could afford it. So um, that's caused a lot. And that was actually mentioned in the Bank of America thing. It's caused a lot of people to, um, to, to just hate what they're doing over there. And it's caused a lot of eyeballs to be seen that uh, Wizards of the Coast is, is not having the players 
best interest of mine. And uh, it's caused a lot of people to kind of turn away from the game. And I love Magic the Gathering, but that's why I am the irate Magic player right now because I hate what Hasbro, its own company, is doing to it. It is very, it's it's similar uh, in um, uh, in theory I mean, as what Disney's done to Star Wars or Marvel. It, when you see the parent company just not take care of of the the golden goose, the thing that's actually making its money. Look. Hasbro has Transformers, you know, but that's not their big sell. They have Monopoly, but come on, it's not their big sell. They have other IPs, but their big sell has been for years. What's kept the company afloat has been Magic the Gathering. And now uh, they're just printing it into the dust and printing so many things that's, that's making the prices of a lot of these other cards come down, which is making collectors leave the game. Uh, players of the game. I mean, shoot, every kind of Magic player has been hurt by something they've done lately. And um, you, you just the the way the world out there right now, people are not happy, and I get it, you know. So I had to do a little rant. The thought the um, Danny Gomez over here, the thousand dollar packs were nothing more than crowdfunding. <laughs> um, the, the the fact of the matter is, is that uh, no, it's the, the the reason why I didn't like it is because I wanted them to actually print cards that I could legally legit play. If you're going to print cards that you can't legally play, why are we printing these cards? You're you're basically saying, okay, well, we're just going to go ahead and let anybody just print whatever fake cards you want. And if that's the case, then we're in the wild, wild west. Well, what's the point of even playing the stupid game? Um, there, there, it's a slippery slope that they went went to that I don't like that, that they went into this. And the fact that they charged a thousand dollars and it's not a thousand dollars for a box set this is a thousand dollars for four packs that could get you cards there are many people online that have opened up these four packs for a thousand dollars that have opened pennies worth of what's in there because most of the cards are not worth anything and the fact that these are not real versions of those cards they can't be turned played they don't have a big one and a need for these out there so people are, are spending a thousand dollars and they might as well just be buying a thousand dollars in lottery tickets and losing every one of them. Well, I just it, know. So yeah, I, I, it hurts the game. As, yeah, I know a lot of collectors are were mad because if you have these cards from way back when, a lot of them are not able. They came up with this no reprint list, and if you have these cards, you know you know the value value of them are are just going to keep rising. But if they reprint them in in any way, it'll hurt that bottom line, which, you know, I get. I totally, you don't want them to keep re-releasing the same damn thing over and over again. And I got to address this, too. I I got to address this, too, that that Danny says also back that uh, just don't buy it uh, um, and let people who who don't want to spend the money on it um, or who do want to spend the money on it do it. You're not losing anything here. But the thing of it is, is that you are. And there's been a lot of people in the community that have been telling people, don't buy this. Because what happens is, is that Hasbro are, are just like what I said before, they only care about the wallet. So they're, they're going to put a $1,000 product out there that's a huge risk, a huge gamble for anybody who buys it. And then if everybody buys it and it sells out, guess what comes next year? A $2,000 product, a $4,000 product. And what's, what's happening is, is that on top of all that, you're printing cards that should not be made. We shouldn't have fake versions. There is a problem with counterfeit magic cards out there. People make fake magic cards and sell them, and then all of a sudden now they're it, it's like printing fake money. You can get thousands and thousands of dollars for a black lotus. So now we're gonna print a a, a different backed black lotus out there so that somebody can counterfeit. Or the even worse part is is that they could even counterfeit these, and these are harder to detect. You're you're letting uh, the scammers and the people that are doing that. You're giving them more options to be able to do that. On top of it, and yeah. you're going to keep making the gold cup post bigger and bigger by saying, "Okay, now thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars, hundred thousand dollar pack." You know, when does it stop? Right, and, and I will say, I, I, there was a specific card that I wanted a high a high dollar card, and I had to go through three or four different eBay sellers because every time I got this card. I, I would, I, you would have to take like the the little microscope thing and look, look at it, and like three times in a row, I would get this card, and I'm like, oh, this is a damn counterfeit, I, and 
And the guys were just like, oh, I didn't know. It's just, uh, uh, and I don't know if they were being jackasses or what. I don't know if they really were trying to rip me off or maybe they got duped. But it's just, it's a problem. And, yeah, so <laughs> it's just counterfeiting is a bad problem that I just hate. Uh, and, and when it comes to Magic the Gathering, I don't really play anymore because, uh, and this is another problem, they've implemented so many different mechanics yeah. into the game. You just can't really just pick it up anymore and play. You got to know what this does, that it's does. It's so hard for new and, players to get into it because you need, yeah. if you're, you're going to play the most popular format, it's called Commander. But if you play that, you're talking 30 plus years now of different abilities, different mechanics, different creatures, different spells, different whatever. And then and you've got like 50 uh, cards that flip over now. And yeah. I'm, I'm just and, like, what? And on top of all that, you have to worry about how those cards interact with the other 30 year plus of cards that have come out over the years. And it, it is it is tough. And I've played for so long. I mean, I played when I was a little kid. I've played for the last 15 years now straight just going through and it's tough for even me so i can't imagine a new person coming in and being like i don't understand this you know every every kind of person your competitive players hate it because they focus so much on the casual stuff now that the competitive players don't feel like they're being catered to anymore and you look at covid and some of these things that hit that now there's no there wasn't places to go to play so on top of all that now competitive cards kind of fall in price because no one needs them because if they're doing it, they're playing online. If anything, your, your, your casual players are mad because they're printing stupid things like this 30th edition where they're putting fake cards into the market. And so, uh, so now they, they feel priced out of the game. They can't, they can't play it for it. Your new players can't play. So you don't have a new info. So you're only dealing with current people who've played the game. So you're, you're only talking to your most indoctrinated of people. Because the new players are like, yeah, this is too complex. I'm just going to go off and play something else. You right. know? Right. You, 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 I, you're systematically killing this game. I can't believe what they're doing. Yeah, it's, it's so intimidating now. And that's that's the exact reason why I don't jump back into it. It's just I don't have time to sit there and be like, okay, what's this mechanic do? What's that mechanic do? And, and build a deck that, I'm, that I can handle, I guess, for lack of a better term. Because there's just so much going on. I just want to play and go. And, yeah, of course, you can't really do that now because everybody else is sitting there making all these competitive decks. And I'm like, oh, I just want my ass stomped into the ground. There's no fun in that. So yeah. uh, another thing, too, Counter is... Counterfeits seems... hurt also. Counterfeits are also a big problem, too. Because what ends up happening is, is that you counterfeit these cards it, as people leave the game. Less people are going to be out there uh, wanting to buy it, and then it puts uh, it puts questions on whether or not, like Chris had with these situation where he wanted to buy the card, and he was questioning about whether or not these the uh, these cards were worth it to buy um, because is there counterfeiters? Are they fakes? He's been you know is he being scammed? And that's going to make it so that anybody who's buying the high high class cards aren't going to buy them so people who have those high class cards are desperate to sell them so what do they do they drop their prices and then when you drop the prices of the big expensive cards the medium price cards are going to go down because everything trickles down and then the medium price cards the lower end cards are going to go down and everything goes down in value well sure if it's a buyer's market that seems great everybody just buys up their stuff and whatever but then what happens is, is that the value of these cards go out that people start leaving the games in droves and then no one's playing the damn game I've seen so many TCGs that have died over the years that World of Warcraft had a car, had a TCG. Star Trek had a TCG. Star Wars had a TCG. Vampire the Masquerade. You know what happened? The, the problem with it was, was that the card prices were, were worth nothing. People didn't want to invest in it. They didn't have excitement over their stuff. They didn't want to play the game. And then they end up leaving and no one played the game. When we talk about Lorcana coming up here. This is why I said the biggest hurdle that Disney's Lorcana is going to have is whether or not they can get people to play the dang game. You know, it, it could just last just on the IP. Pokemon does very well. There, I know many people who collect Pokemon cards but don't play the game. But that's not every card game. And I've seen many of them come and many of them fall. And, you know, this, Disney's coming into this real late in the game. I don't know if they're going to have uh, enough to really – Especially now that Magic, the big one, the, the the number one 
is is struggling. Now they're going to come into this game and go, we, we think we know better. Okay, let's see you do it. And I thought this was interesting that um, Lorcana, is that how you say that? Lorcana is how I pronounce it. Lorcana, okay. Uh, yeah, the, the cards that they handed out at the D23 Expo are going for like $900. It's like, holy crap. <laughs> so there's like big anticipation around this game, it looks like. Yeah, I mean, th there's anticipation because Disney is a big IP, but I just True. think that this is going to be a game where people are going to collect the cards, but I don't think they're going to play the game. I, you know, that's I, that, a good that's, point. I think that's, that's what's going to happen too. This is going to be like Pokemon in that sense, where there's going to be a few people who play the game, more people who collect the cards. Yeah. Right. And, and okay. uh, yeah, and I'm telling you, like, that's the thing too, is, is that, you, you, you look at card games that have – Harry Potter had a card game. If I wanted to, I can go online and buy a Harry Potter card game, all right? Super cheap, all right? Because the, the fact of the matter is that no one's playing the dang game. The reason why these cards tank in price is because no one's playing it. When people are – when people know – if I know that I have a really amazing card that everybody wants, that price is going to go up, and I'm going to sell it for the highest – amount because everybody wants it but if nobody wants it the part card prices are going to keep tanking and tanking because i am desperate to sell that card and that's where we're at right now i, I look at facebook and there are people begging to sell like re revised dual lands that were hundred dollar cards you know they're desperate to get rid of those cards because they're afraid that they're that now that they printed these fake versions that people are just going to be like ah whatever and that they're they're not going to want to buy those cards anymore and it's making the game actually be – people are, are jumping ship, and that's what's scary about it. It has nothing to do with, oh, my, you know, make the cards easier accessible. They could do that. It make it real easy, all right? But but the problem there is is that they got to make sure to do it with kick gloves. They got to, one hand, print things but not overprint them because then they're worthless and no one wants the dang things. Right. It's, it's a, a fine line they got to run. Yeah, it's a very polarizing topic for sure. All right, so we're at the uh, hour and a half mark here, and there's just a couple other things I want to get to. I'm kind of running out of steam myself. Um, <laughs> so we'll change things up to DC here. And everybody's wondering what the hell's going on with Batman because it seems like there's going to be 50 Batman running around in the, the – what is it? And, and 60 Jokers fighting them, so it's great. <laughs> right. So they're, they're kind of figuring out, okay, are we going to get Batflack, uh Robert Patterson, and we have yeah. uh, rumors of what's his uh, my, Michael Keaton coming back. Which... Well, he was in Bat the Batwoman or whatever Bat whatever the one that was got canceled. Batgirl, Batwoman. Um, yeah, that one got canceled. He was he was supposed to have a cameo. Hmm. So, well, I will say, I I think I would prefer seeing uh, Ben Affleck be the Batman over Robert Patterson. Because I did not care. Uh, look, that Batman movie was good. But like I said in the last episode, I couldn't take my kids to it. And kids are not going to have that fuzzy, warm, fuzzy feeling when they go to this movie and grow up and be like, oh, man, that was such a good movie. I got to go back and see that. You know, and this was for adults only. Yeah. And it's just they gave us a Batman that was so emo. I couldn't really appeal to it either. I'm like, wait a minute. I grew up with Batman in the 90s where he's this, you know, part bat, part uh, billionaire playboy. Like, what, what is going on here? You know, this is somebody that can handle his emotions. And with what, what we're getting now is this emo Batman that just is, he can't control his emotions. He's just, you know, doing whatever. And I, I'm not I'm not liking that. You know, I, our, our Batman should be stronger emotionally than yeah. what they gave us in the last installment yeah i mean we're, we're gonna have an issue with this when they recast iron man i i do think that will happen oh, they will recast yeah. iron man. but the, the the problem with dc's world is that there there's so many different versions of what's going on i was actually hoping that a, the flash movie would kind of tie everything in the way that uh spider-man no way home kind of made all the spider-man movies kind of in the same somewhat in the same continuity different multiverses but like in the same continuity i i would have loved that they would have done something in that where i mean they guess they still maybe can i know that ezra miller is kind of a toxic individual right now but uh 
um, I would love if they actually did something where they made all the the uh, DC properties kind of together. That would actually really solidify it, you know. And you could have 17 different Batmans, but I don't think they're smart enough to come up with something like that. So, right. And the other thing I wanted to talk about, as you know, I am a gr- big Green Lantern fan, but I've always been worried about this Green Lantern series that they want to include. Um, and I guess since the whole merger took over with the HBO thing, uh, they've actually put the axe to the Green Lantern show. So now we're not getting it's which I was glad to see that it was getting the axe because I wanted Hal Jordan to be the main character because he's the main character in the comics. You can't there, there's no way around. It. It's like having uh, Nightwing be the lead of uh, Batman, or I guess that's a bad analogy, but. So in, but I guess it is a good analogy because, so what they're doing is they're not going to focus on Hal Jordan in, in the new series, which is supposed to be the lead Green Lantern. Instead, they're going to focus on John Stewart, the black Green Lantern who came later, which I'm like, well, why wouldn't you start from the beginning with the main Green Lantern character and then work your work, work your way forward? That's what I want to see. I want to see Hal Jordan you know, get incapacitated. So they bring John Stewart in and then somewhere along the way, he gets incapacitated. So they have to bring in Guy Gardner and then it just leads to Kyle uh, uh, Rayner. Is that how you say that? Um, but I want to see like the evolution and the flow. Where were you? Guy Gardner was together. the one I couldn't think of. Who? Hey, Which one? Guy Gardner was the one I couldn't think of. Oh, okay. Guy Gardner. Uh, for the longest time. Um, yeah. yeah, but I'm just I'm just so mad because yeah. I'm like, ah. Oh, but uh, if you're, there's only one time. Look, we there's only one shot we're gonna get at getting a Green Lantern series, and I'm I just want it done right, and I just feel like they're just yeah. gonna drop the ball on this if they want to go the way all these other franchises are going, with elevating the, uh you know, the, the SJW type scenario where it's like, okay, we're, we're going to uh, elevate these other guys over the white guy. And I'm like, Oh, can't, just for once, can we not play politics into this? Just give me something that we're, we're dying to see. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. And thanks to, I really appreciate I, that. Yeah. I, I, I... And uh, I mean, oh, uh, what, you asked. Uh, what, hold, hold on for one hey, second, your, uh, Toa. You, your, Toa, you, you made a comment before uh, asking if if I was doing any more call-ins. Uh, I actually had to shut that feature off because it was costing me like a hundred dollars a month, and every time I would use it, it just would malfunction. Uh, sometimes uh, the caller would drop out. I couldn't c- connect with the caller, and they. Sometimes they couldn't hear Tim talking, so I was like, "Oh, this is just pain in the ass." I figured we'll just address the questions as they come in the comments, the main ones that we wanted to get to. So uh, there you go. But sorry, Tim, I, I didn't mean to talk over you. No, no, no. Hey, hey, hey! You saved me from the the Green Lantern talk. So I was just asking <laughs> who your favorite Green Lantern was of all of them. Oh. Uh, uh, Hal Jordan, hands down, because he was the the main guy. And now, uh, well, I did I did say that I was curious if uh, they ever did the green uh, the um, Hal Jordan goes bad arc. Would you be interested in seeing that? The the green. Oh, I would love that. The whole parallax. Um, yeah. That, I, you, the I, I problem would love is, is that you. That. Have- have to come up with something besides Superman, uh, Doomsday, and, and Superman's death and stuff, because that was all tied in with it, if I'm not mistaken. So, well, that's why um, I would love to see. That's why I would love to see this um, come to fruition. This Green Lantern mm-hmm. series, but I want it to be based solely off the comics because there's so much rich history there that you could spend the first year of. And this now this uh, this is how I would plot out a Green Lantern. TV series for the first year, I would have the initiation of Hal Jordan, and then the the cliffhanger would be, oh, Sinestro is actually 
doing bad stuff with his ring, and so he falls from grace. Uh, Sinestro, for those of you don't, who don't know, he's Hal Jordan's mentor uh, of learning the ring and how it works and things like that. So when he turns bad, that could be the cliffhanger. So the next year, you know, maybe he's taken, uh, maybe he d- incapacitates Hal Jordan. So the next year we see, you know, John Stewart come in. Maybe he gets something happens to him, bring in Guy Gardner. You know, all this stuff is going around in the background. And then maybe the season two ender is the rise of the Sinestro Corpse, which which is the the Yellow Lanterns. And then you would just go through there. You would go through um, the fall of Hal Jordan, of him becoming Parallax. um, And then you would start getting into a lot of the Jeff John stuff where, you know, we have the rise of the the other Lanterns where they had this, uh, what what was that called? The, The big lantern war or something there's a specific name for it a uh, blackest night uh you have that whole blackest, war going on I heard that blackest night yeah yeah and you can have that go on for like two or three years and that would be fantastic be cool. and then just go from I mean, there it, so it sounds I would like that would be a really sweet epic you know that that would actually be uh interesting to, to, to watch with you should join the cabal and uh, uh <laughs> absolutely yeah. that's just that's the main reason i'll t- join the cabal uh, but in the same vein, you know, the same thing goes with Batman. I would love to see a Batman uh, TV show done right because we keep getting stuff that tiptoes around the waters. You know, we keep getting Gotham. We keep getting, um, yeah, I didn't care you know, Gotham. all this goofy stuff. It's like, give me a Batman where he starts, he introduces all these characters, and then at some point we get uh, Dick Grayson come in. And then he becomes Nightwing, and then you bring in Jason Todd, and then he gets taken out of the picture. Then you bring in uh, who's the other guy? Um, oh shoot, why am I blanking on this? Um, the the third Robin, uh, uh, Tim Drake. Yeah, Tim Drake. Tim Drake. Right? Yes, Tim Drake. I know because it's my then, name, Tim. I mean, come on. <laughs> right, right, right. And then at some point, you know, then then you bring back uh, Jason, Jason Todd. As a uh, red hood, because that was um, a phenomenal story arc. So I, it just, ah, uh, you know, I feel like they they keep dropping the ball with Batman, all, all the DC properties. I mean, let, let's let's get down to brass tacks here. I'm not too thrilled with what they've been doing with Superman, uh, mm-hmm. Shazam. I, I want the old school Shazam. By the way, I don't want this Power Ranger. You know, uh. uh what do you call it? Um, Captain Planet ethnicity <laughs> type thing that they're doing with all these uh, uh, Shazam characters. Like, just give me hey, the main there, ones. There could, there could be hope, though, and maybe the reason why they're they're talking about Affleck and stuff instead of uh, uh, Pattinson is because there was actually a lot of positive at the end of Black Adam because Henry Cavill showed up as Superman. Ah, gotcha. I didn't see, but. I- so I think that people, I think that there is, is an outcry people who want, want this, or at least those characters kind of come back. And so the movies that are going off away from that, that they're trying to maybe, they want to really keep in on that focus. So I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if we get a, a, yeah, another Snyderverse movie in the next five years. Now, I'm not saying Snyder right. directing it, but just Snyderverse movie. Well, I don't know what they'll do, but uh, all right. I, I just hope it's better. So, okay, uh, I will end this here. Uh, like, I, I'm out of steam. I I've, <laughs> I don't like talking this long because I'm my voice is kind of like hoarse. And but uh, yeah. I don't know when we we'll be able to do hours. another one of these. Because... Yeah, yeah. I wanted to to kind of make this extra long because we've been gone for so long. But, uh, yeah, yeah. thanks all you guys for watching and commenting. And, and thank you again for uh, for all the uh, the paid comments. I appreciate that because I, I can't I can't monetize these uh, broadcasts the way I do them, unfortunately. So that every little bit helps. And uh, yeah, so thanks. Hey, do you have any closing comments there, Tim? I guess not. They're trying okay. to shut us down, Chris. <laughs> I get, They're trying to shut us down. 
<laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. And uh, if we're not back by Christmas, I hope everyone has a Merry Christmas, a great holiday uh, with all the nuttiness that's that's here and coming and pro uh, prophesied to come later this uh, year. And uh, so hopefully we'll all get to the other side. So thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Let's see. Let's get um, our outro music wherever I put that. Join the cabal, everybody. <laughs> okay, there. What is that? All the core base plus one? All right, thanks again and appreciate everybody. Thanks for watching. See you guys. Live long and prosper. Deep time.